Infertility affects about one out of every five women in the United States between the ages of 18 and 49 years old. That's according to the CDC. That's right. And now Arizona Congressman Ruben Gallego and his wife, Sydney, they are opening up about their own struggles conceiving in hopes of helping others going through the same thing. And they join us now for a GMA3 exclusive. Thank you so much for being here and sharing your story. Uh, I know that it's tough to go down memory lane. But before we delve into this important and personal issue, mm -hmm. Congressman Gallego, I have to ask, we are just around the corner from the new year and the shift of power in the House of Representatives <laughs> to the GOP. What are your concerns or your expectations right. in 2023? Well, uh, look, the McCarthy is not being able to put his own coalition together. I expect the Republicans to unfortunately not have a very organized House of Representatives, and I think that is of unfortunate really for the country. Uh, and you know, we need to be doing some work, and they just don't have it right now in them to, to lead. And, and to that point, we want to ask you, formerly Democratic Arizona Senator Kristen Sinema, uh, Kirsten Sinema recently wrote an op-ed revealing that she registered as an independent, saying she is rejecting party politics. What are your thoughts on that announcement and rumors that you might make a run for her seat in the Senate? Well, look, at the end of the day, she has to do what she has to do. She clearly has uh, abandoned not Democrats of Arizona, but the voters of Arizona. And I've been very clear, uh, I'll be making that decision in 2024. Uh, it's not 2024 yet, and uh, you know, I think my family and I have more, more to talk about. All right, Congressman, we got the headlines out of the way. Now we want to turn to your personal Thank story you. that you came here to share, because you're talking about struggling with infertility. You made plans in August last year to start a family, and in March 2022, a pregnancy mm -hmm. test actually showed you were pregnant. You went to your doctor, Sydney. What were you told? Mm -hmm. So I actually had that appointment scheduled with my doctor just because I wanted to start the conversation about why we were having a hard time getting pregnant. So walked into the office and I showed my doctor the picture of the test and she said, congratulations, this is so exciting for you. Let's just do blood work while you're here um, just to confirm everything. But as far as I can see, you know, you guys are pregnant and congrats on that. Um, I then a couple days later received a voicemail telling me that my blood work was negative um, that I was not in fact pregnant and that I should actually contact a different doctor to talk about infertility. Um, no further explanation. It was just a very curt um, voicemail and then I was unable to get a hold of my doctor. So I was confused. I was heartbroken. I think that we were both extremely disappointed and, you know, just frustrated that we didn't have answers. I, I know that you've told us that a, you. a doctor said to you, you are the culprit. Explain to us when a doctor said that I, and, and just what went through your mind, because that had to be soul crushing for you. Right, it, it absolutely was. And this was, you know, on the heels of, of that voicemail that I had received saying that I was not in fact pregnant. Um, and then I was finally able to get a hold of the <clears> doctor, <throat> which actually took some time to do surprisingly. And um, the doctor said to me, you know, well, has your has your husband had a kid before? And I said, yes, he has a child from a previous marriage. And she said, oh, well, then he's obviously not the culprit. My advice to you would be to keep trying. And mm. I was still, you know, felt that I didn't have answers about what was going on with my body. Now, Cindy, your story is so incredibly important. As a physician, I was struck by the opportunities where your diagnosis was missed. I'm just trying to figure out as a physician mm -hmm. how I can learn and how others can learn to better advocate for themselves to make sure that we don't miss an important diagnosis like this. I mean, I, I really think it's about just listening more to, to the patients. I So many times I feel like as women, you walk into a doctor's office, especially when it comes to OB and gynecological care. And, you know, there's a lot of things that are, are done by the book. And if, you know, it's not something that's simple diagnosis, a lot of times it's written off. I mean, there's plenty of women who are trying to get pregnant and, you know, also a ton of women who struggle with miscarriages. And I feel like there's just such a lack of explanation and a lot of empathy, you know, that that happens inside of a doctor's office. So I think just really listening to your patients and trying to show a little bit of compassion and, you know, understanding for what they're going through really would go a long way. Well, Sydney, we are happy to say that this story does not end here because I'm told you've got some news to share with us today, huh? Yes, yes. <laughs> Ruben and I are thrilled to announce that we are pregnant um, yes. and we are expecting baby Gallego to be joining us <laughs> in 2023 um, in July. So 
We'll see how close we get up to 4th of July, but as of now, the due date is July 13th, but we are, we are thrilled. Fantastic. Oh, that would just be the best. That would be the best. Congratulations to you, Sydney Gallego, to you, Congressman Thank you. Gallego. Thank you so much for joining us and, and for sharing your beautiful news right here on GMA3. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.